there, you need to be able to thermal regulate. And the last layer, the outside layer, the weather layer, the waterproof layer, that's the windproof one. That's the one that when all else fails, that's your protection against everything out there. That is also the easiest one to take on and off. Thermal regulator. The three W's, the wicking layer, the warp layer, and the weatherproof layer. The only one of those layers that you have multiples of is the warp layer. Everything else is just the inside or the outside layer. How many layers are you going to need? I don't know what the temperature is going to be like next week. If it's 20 below, you probably can't bring enough layers. If it's 35, then you probably got on too many layers already. All right, enough on the clothing. Uh, Jeremiah from Troop 315 has asked me to acknowledge him. He says he's a gorgeous young man, and he wants everybody to know that. So, Jeremy, thank you. The second thing we're going to talk about for just a minute is hydration and food. My little sister cross-country skied up this very road. This is about 30 years ago. And we sat down at the picnic tables at Justice Park, and she went, <gasps> and she melted into a pile on the ground. We picked her up, slapped her around a little bit. What you have for breakfast? I'm dying. <laughs> and you just skied from the parking lot to Justice Park. So you pull out a chocolate bar and peel, open her up, shove it down her throat. About 10 minutes later, she goes, oh, I feel great. Let's go, let's go. She had literally ran herself out of calories. So before you do an outside adventure, this is an activity in the outdoors. You're going to burn twice as many calories as you do as when you're sitting in your underwear at home in front of the idiot box. You will burn calories. It'll take you calories to stay warm. It'll take you calories to stay handsome, and it'll take you calories because you're going to be burning them up while you're walking. Don't skim. Next week, stop and buy the Egg McMuffin that you want. Eat the extra egg for breakfast. Have the omelet and the toast and the jam before you come out. Stoke the furnace. But don't forget that you, when you stoke, you know, the old coal engines, they would stop and they would load them up with coal or wood or diesel oil, but they had to add one other component. That steam engine will not run without both food and fuel, uh, uh, fuel and water. So after your third cup of coffee, after your second Diet Coke, that's all fine and it counts as liquid, but you need to pound down some plain old clear water. And in your day pack, you probably ought to have a couple of bottles of water. Have some in your car for the drive up. And when you're done the trip, done the beaver count, there's some more water right there. I cannot overemphasize it. In Antarctica, we worked at 10,000 feet, shoveling snow, 20 below zero. And the new neophyte would land and step off the plane, and he'd come out. And he goes, Mr. Pretty, he says, I have no strength. I, I have no power. I said, well, son, you're 10,000 feet. You're doing hard physical labor. And just for the fun of it, when was the last <coughs> water you drank? He said, well, I had two beers for breakfast. <laughs> I said, well, hot shot, go into the warm-up shack, and here's a liter of water, and you do not come out until you've drank the whole bottle. And it is astonishing how many people neglect the water. They'll eat the candy bars, they'll, they'll uh, guzzle the eggs and the, and the pancakes and the syrup, but they won't drink the water. You've got to stoke the furnace with food and water. So in your day pack, you should maybe have a little munchie, handful of gourd, uh, some candy bars. I, I don't like pure chocolate. I mean, I, I love pure chocolate, but on something like this, you need carbohydrate. 
So a uh, energy bar, a granola bar, I like the diet bars fiber one. They taste better. And if you ate your dog's dog biscuits, they're the same thing, nothing different. <laughs> so food and water. Hydrate before you come out. Have some water before you come out. Now, if you're in the front country and you're skiing the golf course, the fancy pants and the ski poles, that's all you need. Go have a ball. Knock yourself out. If you're in the back country, you need enough to take care of yourself to be safe. I take it one step farther. Every time I ski, I give away hat and gloves. Now, wait a minute, I'm missing something. How come I am the one giving it away? It's because I'm the one that has it, and the people I ski with don't. So my day pack always looks like this. But they couldn't spend the night out, and I could. I would not hesitate one second to just walk out the door and burrow a hole in and spend the night. This is not a survival class. We